Hey everybody, Aaron Zamzo with the Fire Rescue Fitness Podcast. Today we're going to talk about how to stay healthy and what you need to focus on through the ages as a first responder from your 20s all the way up through your 50s. What do you need to do? What do you need to focus on to stay fit for duty? It's time to get fit for duty with the FRF Podcast. Here's your host, Aaron Zamzo. Hey everybody, Aaron Zamzo here again, Fire Rescue Fitness. Thanks for listening to this podcast. We talk a lot about first responder health. We talk a lot about fitness, uh, longevity, how to stay fit for duty. And a question came up uh, via Facebook. It was, um, I wish I knew who it was from. It was from a guest on a Messenger account who asked about, you know, how do I stay fit through the ages or what is the advice you would give to first responders through different age groups? So, you know, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, what we need to really focus on. And I thought this was a great topic to talk about. I'm um, actually doing some research. I'm going to write an, another blog post on this because it it's a very valid question. You know, when we're in our 20s, we're young. We're full of piss and vinegar, as we always say. And, uh, you know, and I, I look at that age group and, I, and I, there's some things I'd like to tell you. Uh, you know, when I went through my 30s in, in, in my career and 40s now, tail end of my 40s, you know, what are the things that I see that, uh, I, you know, personally I've had to focus on and that I see others in that same age group focusing on it. So what we're going to talk about is, you know, what do we need to focus on in our 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s? It, and I full disclosure here, this doesn't necessarily just mean, you know, hey, if I'm 20 in my 20s, I need to look at, you know, training more functionally. I mean, you got to do all these things all the way through the broad spectrum of your career. There's just different places to emphasize uh, as you age, actually, within this, uh, you know, fire service or, uh, you know, as a first responder. Life changes a little bit. Your priorities change a little bit. Your ego and that's the main thing that holds us back uh, a lot is our ego gets a little bit um, less and you're a little more open to uh, different things. Um, and, and, and so let's dive into this a little bit more, what I'm talking about, right? So when you're in your 20s, you're usually pu- full of uh, piss and vinegar. I see this a lot. I see, you know, guys, ga- uh, men and women in their tw- mid-20s, they're probably at a lot of times were, were athletes back in high school. And now they get that job as a EMT, a medic, a, a firefighter, a police officer. And what they're doing, they know they need to stay fit for the job, which is awesome. But uh, they go about it all wrong because typically what that generation or what that age group does is they go back to training how they used to train. So, for instance, you know, I, I've done some work uh, down in Memphis, Memphis Fire Department, a lot of Division One football players. When they want to get back in shape, uh, they train like they're football, uh, which they're not. Uh, first responder, being a firefighter is a little bit different. The playing field's a little bit different. And the thing that you need to do in your 20s, uh, and actually if you're just getting into the fire service, so if you get in late like me, I got in when I was in my mid-30s, <clears throat> I should say early 30s, you got to look at training more functionally. So, I, you know, I, I pick on the bench press, but like lifting bench heavy, deadlifts heavy, those are great things, but there also needs to be some components of functionality, more core work, uh, more mobility work, right? Full body training sometimes, not just muscle groups because we don't isolate on the fire ground. Uh, you want to make sure that you stay mobile and strong through different ranges of motion and train that way. Look at what you do on a daily basis and try to improve your performance. Think about more performance-based Fit, health and fitness, not just lifting heavy stuff around uh, for the sake of lifting it. You know, and, and and I say that through the 20s because that's where ego starts to get in the way. And I have this discussion a lot with, um, uh, my, you know, family and, and my uh, stepson. He's he's full of piss and vinegar. He's, vinegar. he's a strong, strong boy. Uh, and what will happen is he'll start to go, hey, I want to get more cut up and I want to get uh, more mobile and then he sees someone else in the gym lifting heavier than him and he, t- he changes his whole training status up in how he trains and i think that happens a lot uh you know in the fire service uh you know we have those egos we want to try to lift heavy we feel better when we lift heavy not saying don't do that but add other components in your 20s that will set you up for better performance not only through your 20s but into your 30s 
Um, and, and speaking of the 30s, now, as you aged, right, you got through your 20s, you maybe got an injury or two. When you get into your 30s, it's more about staying consistent and starting to really establish healthy uh, habits in nutrition and fitness, making sure that it's part of your life. That's where I see the biggest uh, disconnect from health and wellness is, is typically members of the fire service in their 30s. They usually are just in the middle of starting to have kids. Responsibilities come up. They might actually even be promoted if they've been in the fire service for a little bit of, of time. And so those outside responsibilities start to get in the way and take their time. Um, the intentions are usually good, but if the habits aren't there, it's real difficult to build them and stay consistent. So, you know, in your 20s, you want to look at big picture, you know, a big picture training to to do the job better, performance based, functional. 30s, you want to make sure that it's a little bit more focused on staying consistent, building solid habits, working out consistently, uh, making sure that you understand nutrition a little bit better, and uh, and and time management, how you can work out more efficiently through your 30s. Now, when you hit uh, you know, the later part of your 30s, you start to do this thing. You start to feel things a little bit more. Um, the joke that I always have is, is when you go out, you can't recover, right? Uh, <laughs> even though I'm a fitness guy, uh, look, I, every once in a while, I, I do like to ha- engage in a cocktail. And what you find is that you can't recover from that. Uh, as quickly. Um, same thing with workouts and maybe fires. You'll see that you're sore for a couple of days. Uh, we just did a RIT training where I was kind of bounced around as the, uh, you know, the, the, the patient or the down firefighter. And I was sore for a couple of days after that. You know, when you're in your 20s, you bounce back. In your 30s, you start to realize that you're not able to do that as much. Uh, and, and that reality uh, sometimes stings. And that's when the ego starts to kind of, you know, take some shots. And that's when you just really need to stay consistent with fitness. Um, Again, make sure that it's part of your lifestyle. Now, when you get into your 40s, if you set that up, when you get into your 40s, you're consistently working out. You understand how nutrition will affect not only your health, but your mood and your performance. You really need to focus then on allowing your body to recover more and, and really focus on recovery stress management and mobility and i like to use tom brady in this example he's 45 at the time of this podcast and he's still well we think he's coming back he's leaving i don't know what he's doing but he he's able to perform at 45 in the nfl and he mentions a lot called pliability and i believe it's it's uh it's very very um it's very telling pliability to me means understanding recovery mobility how to manage stress how your body uh, can adapt to the stress. Like in his his particular job as a quarterback, he takes some shots from time to time. And how does his body react when he get gets those uh, takes those hits? And and how can he kind of make sure that he's strong enough and and mobile enough to still do the job? And and when we we look at first responders, I think there's a direct correlation. You know, you're stepping up on that engine or that ladder. You know, anywhere from 80 to 100 times. That's 16 to 14 inch step. You have to stay mobile in order to do that. The gear restricts us, but if you're mobile, uh, it won't restrict you as much. Meaning, you know, your shoulders, you gotta be able to reach behind you to get the SCBA on. Uh, patients, you gotta be able to reach and, and drag the patients. Uh, car extrications, you know, you're moving through all these different planes of motion, uh, right? Like, you know, it's not like uh, forward and back. It's a lot of twisting, it's a lot of lifting, a lot of carrying. And when you're in your 40s, you don't necessarily move as efficiently, especially if you're not training properly. Uh, And that's where coming in your 20s and and understanding the functionality and how to improve your performance and how you move, uh, you know, move and perform in your 20s, establish the habit of continually working on that in your 30s and then your 40s, focus more just on movement, mobility, and that stress management side of things. that's really where I, I believe uh, we need to focus. I'm in my 40s. I'm in my later 40s. The job starts to take its toll. You um, you know, at this point, you know, in your career, you probably have an injury or two. It's managing those injuries. 
if I'm supposed to do a workout and I didn't get a lot of sleep the night before, I'm going to tone it down a little bit and do more recovery mobility work. And one, number one, I do that because I know it works. And number two, my ego doesn't get in the way, right? My ego doesn't tell me I got to lift really, really heavy. I don't really care to do that. Um, I care to be able to move and I care to be able to manage stress, right? PTSD will start ringing its its uh, its ugly head in its in your 30s and 40s because you're you have more exposure to uh, trauma and so um, you have to really understand the basics of recovery understand what goes on not only physically but mentally what are you doing how is your body responding how is your mind responding uh, to the the stresses of life and the job so fitness in your 40s you got to stay mobile Take extra time, understand how your body um, is feeling and responding, and manage mobility and stress. That, to me, is the pinnacle. Um, And not to say that you shouldn't do that in your 30s and your 20s. You should. You should do this all the way through your career. Um, But you really notice that if you don't in your 40s, it's really going to catch up with you quickly. And even going into your 50s, your 50s and later 40s, I would add in the component of managing your health in general, looking at cancer screens. Make sure that um, you're really placing a lot of focus on your um, physicals every year. Skin, uh, making sure you're looking at your skin, um, staying up to date on on all of the the, the cancer screens and pre screens, and and really digging into managing your overall health. Uh, and, and right, like, hear what I'm saying here, folks. I'm not saying don't do that when you first get in the fire service. What I'm saying is that it, it becomes more imperative the older you get. Um, and, you know, for me, getting in, in the, the fire service in my 30s, it took me a, a little bit of time to understand functionally how to train. You know, I, I've worked with athletes, worked with pro athletes. And when I first got in the fire service, if you've heard my story, I was getting my butt kicked because I wasn't training functionally. I didn't understand what it all entailed and uh, that's why why I'm, I'm going back and recapping here but going back in your 20s and when you first get in the fire service understand you are you know training for a physical job and your playing field is very diverse but you have to adjust your training to adapt to that playing field and then the next step of that is to stay consistent through your career make sure fitness is a um, a consistent part of that Understand how nutrition plays into that as well and uh, really educating yourself on what foods can do to you, not only from a performance standpoint, but from a weight standpoint, health management standpoint. Really take your 30s to play around with that and and educate and then uh, apply that in your 40s and uh, really place emphasis on mobility, taking time to recover, rest, sleep. One that I didn't mention a couple minutes ago, but sleep and stress management, huge in your late 30s and 40s. Um, You know, for many reasons, I think, one, the trauma of the jobs and the stress of the job starts to hit you a little bit more. You have more outside stressors with family. Uh, You might be getting promoted at that point, so you have more uh, responsibility and, and pressures on you. And that then transfers into your 50s where now it could be having some lasting ramifications on your health if you don't manage that. Cancer is really, really high. PTSD, mental health issues, depression, all of those things. I think low testosterone for men in the fire service is a huge issue nobody wants to talk about because it's, you know, questioning our manhood. It's not. It's, um, you know, low testosterone happens because of exposure to all the inflammatory things that, that we, we have. We have exposure to chemicals. We have poor eating habits in some cases high sugar, high stress. Um, So that can lead to a lot of health issues. Uh, And and those need to be managed and addressed throughout your 40s, especially into your 50s. Now, if you prolong your career into your 60s, and and that's happening around because of, uh, you know, pension systems, it's happening because of insurance, um, you really, really need to take note of just overall management of health. And, and typically, if you make it through your 50s, through the you know, the fire service or, or being a first responder, you, you hopefully have figured that out. The one thing I, I really want to place an emphasis on is it doesn't matter your age, 
20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, is manage your weight. And what I mean by that is I'm not saying you can't be 20, 30 pounds overweight, but don't let it get obsessive, right? I I personally think uh, that, you, you know, you should look at your weight from year to year. Two or three or four pounds happens. But if all of a sudden you're up to 10 to 15 pounds heavier than when you got into the fire service, you really need to look at and evaluate what, what changes you can make. And here's the reason why. All of the research that I've ever done uh, looking at firefighter performance, there is one common theme that those that follow uh, and do higher BMI ranges, uh, obesity ranges, uh, that transfers to a, a decrease in performance, uh, more health issues, and uh, uh, you know higher instances of cancer, higher instances of of um, mental health actually as well, and um, heart disease and diabetes. So you want to manage your weight all the way through your career, and don't wait until it gets no pun intended too late for that. Manage your health from the moment you get into the fire service all the way through the end of your career and beyond because you know ultimately um, personally and, and, and we should all feel the same way we want you to retire early and enjoy that retirement we don't want you to have a plethora of health issues we want you to be able to retire or retire as healthy and as happy as you can and enjoy your career be as healthy and happy as you can and here are some things I hope I gave you some insight as to what you need to focus on as far as programming uh, FRF is uh, is a website that I, I run. We we offer uh, programs for first responders, firefighters, EMTs, medics, 60-day programs, 40-day programs that show you how you should functionally train. We also include eating guidelines. Uh, we, we do have a membership service where you can get access to all of our different eight different programs uh, for different goals and, and different ages. So please check that out at firerescuefitness.com. If you have questions uh, like the one that spurred this entire podcast, please reach out via the website, via our social media outlets. You can find them anywhere in the descriptions, firerescuefitness.com. Thanks so much for listening. Let me know if I'm I'm onto something or on something. I love hearing your comments, your questions. Reach out. I'm here to help you and your crew get and stay fit for duty.